Hello and welcome to GeoMind. In this video, we are going to start the introduction to structural geology. As you know, we did a poll on Telegram and YouTube and the structural geology was winner on the Telegram channel. But Metamorphic was also winner on YouTube. But we are going with the structural geology as most of you requested. So after finishing the important aspects of structural geology, we will discuss the metamorphic pathology in upcoming lectures. This video is going to be very basic introduction to structural geology. Okay, so uh, if you are new to geology and uh, if you are preparing for examinations such as UPSC gate, NET, IIT gem, this video is going to be helpful because we will start with the scratch and then we'll, we will move on to the uh, important concepts of structural geology in upcoming parts. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to GeoMind. And if you want to join my telegram group, I've given the link in the description below. My name is Swapnil. And also, if you want to help this channel grow, there is a heart button right beneath this video. So if you want to donate any amount uh, to this channel, it would be appreciated. Thank you. So let's start with the structural geology. So first we will talk about what is structural geology. So structural geology is a branch of geology which deals with the structures of rock. As you know, the geology is a science of earth. Right? Earth is made up of rocks because earth is called a terrestrial planet right terrestrial planet it is also called a rocky planet so we are dealing with the rocks itself especially the rocks which are confined to the uppermost part of the earth's layers which is crust okay so structural geology deals with the structures of rock now what is the structure what is what is a geological structure geological structure is anything which has a geometric shape or configuration okay so rocks which are having geometric configurations are called geological structures so a structural geology deals with the geometry distribution and formation of these structures so if you go out in the field okay or mountains you will see different structures Okay, so the scientists who study these structures are called a structural geologist. Okay, now one thing you have to remember is that structural geology only deals with the structures which are created during the rock deformation. Okay, so in a sense you could say that when a rock is deposited grain by grain, it is generally horizontal. If you talk about the sedimentary rock. Or if you talk about the igneous rock, the primary structures are called plutons, right, dikes, okay, or sills. In this way, the igneous rocks are deposited, right? So these are basically the primary structures. Now also, they are structures, but they are not the deformed structures which a structural geologist deals with. So, a structural geology only deals with the structures which are created during rock deformation. It means that if some forces, regional forces are acting on it, such as tectonic forces, and then after it, it is deformed into a different structure, then this structure is called a secondary structure, secondary structure, and the structural geologist deals with that secondary structure okay so this definition of a structural geology is very very important okay you have to remember that a structural geology only deals with the structure which are created during the rock deformation okay so not with the primary structure formed by the sedimentary or magmatic process and as you know the igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks are also called primary rocks right and the metamorphic rock in between is basically the deformed version of these two rocks, right? Okay. So let's start. 
so if you want to note down these important uh, definitions okay for your examinations uh, you can just pause the video and note them down so here are the example of the primary structures primary structures okay remember these are not structures which are uh, uh, structural geology is going to be dealt with okay so here you can see that a magma when it pushes through the uppermost layers of the earth uh, in most of the time it is this is structure is called pluton okay so here, here is a rock which is called granodiorite it is a fam it comes under the family of granitic rocks so uh, the magma pushes through and then it solidifies into this body or the structure which is called a pluton but remember this is a primary structure of the igneous rock okay so we are not going to deal with this type of structures the primary structures some of the structures you see here are sedimentary structures these are also primary structures okay here you can see that sand grains when they are deposited in their original configurations okay be it current uh, ripples or cross stratification these are the names of the uh, primary structures of sedimentary nature or uh, ripple marks okay or graded bedding these are all primary structures okay but it they these structures can be deformed when the forces when the regional forces act upon these structures and modify them or deform them okay so whatever the structures that will form after the deformation we are going to deal with it okay so i hope it is clear that what structures the structural geologist is going to be dealing with okay so here you can see uh, an example the visual information is very very important because in structural geology the imagination and the visual aspects um, of the topic is uh, of the utmost importance so here you can see the flat horizontal beds these are your primary beds of uh, limestone and sandstone okay and your sedimentary rocks and this is how a uh, typical sedimentary rock is deposited okay uh, if you have dealt if you have read the uh, principle of original horizontality uh, under your stratigraphy you might be knowing about it okay so the primary aspect is that always a sedimentary rock will deposit in a horizontal fashion okay and after the deposition if the regional forces or the tectonic forces okay are acting upon it and causing it to buckle or deform then the geological structures will form okay so here you can see after the regional forces or tectonic forces act upon these horizontal layers they may be deformed like this fashion okay this is a type of a geological structure which is called a fold okay a type of antiform or anticlinal structure what is antiform what is anticline we will discuss them in next lectures okay so this is how the deformation acts okay so we are going to deal with these deform structures okay so uh, i was talking about the tectonic forces okay so the major force which cause the deformation is your tectonic force and what is tectonic force if you are following my videos on plate tectonics you might be knowing about it you know that earth crust is basically divided into these plates okay and these plates might may be large plates such as pacific plate african plate or they may be smaller plates such as caribbean plate or nazca plate okay and these are constantly moving in different direction so wherever these plate boundaries are there when when the two plates meet here very large scale forces are acting upon the earth crust and most of the geological structures you will see are find in these regions okay so the regional force or the large scale force that which are causing these structures to form okay or the earth lithosphere to deform are your tectonic forces okay so resulting structure of the earth lithosphere and to and and to the motion that change and shape the outer parts of the planet okay so 
structural geology and tectonics are closely related here you can see different plate boundaries okay the plate may be coming together or subducting beneath forming these structures that we are going to talk about okay now here are the classification of geological structures based upon different aspects uh, you need not to note them down this is just for your, for your basic information so you can get a clarity about the geological structure okay the geological structure can be described based upon the geometry okay how the geological structure is shaped okay it might be planar in nature okay planar in nature or curvy planar surface it might might have okay or it might have some linear feature in one dimension okay for example joints veins fault fold shear zone foliation lineation these are all geological structures that we are going to deal with in upcoming lectures these geological structure come under your classification which is based upon geometry then there is a classification which is based upon geological significance such as primary okay so primary uh, structure are basically formed by the consequence of the formational process okay but we are not going to deal with these primary structures such as we discussed such as plutons okay uh, graded bedding all these are your primary structures okay so this is just for your basic information okay you need not to know what is uh, like <clears throat> what are the tectonic structures fluid pressure dri driven okay these we are going to talk about in upcoming uh, lectures then there can be structure which is syn formational penny contemporaneous post deformational okay so uh, okay then the mechanism of deformation what is there fracturing fract frictional sliding plasticity diffusion okay so uh, the structures can be based upon different things okay such as cohesiveness of the uh, grains okay grains whenever whenever i am talking about grains grains basically means the minerals which are present in the rocks okay then based upon the type of strain so strain is very important we are going to deal with this in today's lecture okay contractional extensional strike slip fault okay distribution of deformation in volume of rocks okay continuous penetrative localized discrete okay so uh, do not focus on this okay if you are not going to understand if you are not understanding what is continuous penetrative okay uh, i'm not uh, talking about uh, this in detail because this we will deal with in later parts okay then uh, categories of structure analysis is there that how we describe the structures okay there can be descriptive analysis okay based upon shape appearance of geological structures kinematic analysis based upon the movement movement uh, okay movement of the deformation that how uh, the rocks are uh, moved during the deformational path then there is strain analysis okay so strain is very important this is going we are going to talk about uh, today dynamic mechanism uh, okay tectonic analysis so this is just to let you know that what we are going to deal with in upcoming lectures so this is the important part the previous one the classification and the structural analysis is not that import, important it is just for your basic knowledge okay so like i said that deformation is the heart of the matter okay is the heart of the matter which means that the structures that are formed are due to deformation of the primary structures so what is deformation deformation is my uh, deformation basically means the change in the form deform okay change in the form or it could be said that deformation is the distortion okay a change in form or shape of the rock okay so you could di directly say that deformation is basically deformation is basically strain okay so it is also called strain in your conceptual terminology okay so change in form or shape of the rock or the original rock the rock masses can be translated or rotated as rigid units during the deformation without any internal change in shape so generally when we are concerned with the deformation we are talking about the change in shape okay for example here is a uh, rock mass which is cubic in nature and the forces are acting upon it it might distort okay into 
different shape this is the deformation but in geology there is also translation translation what is translation if a force is acting upon it and rock is moving to a different location this is translation or a rock could be rotated okay so it could happen that translation is acting but the change in shape is not there or the rotation is having uh, the rock is having a rotation but the change in shape is not there so translation and rotation is also the aspect of deformation okay this we will talk about uh, in upcoming slides okay so translation and rotation is known as rigid body deformation why rigid body because the body is not changing its shape or form rather it's changing its location okay or the orientation so translation and rotation is also known as rigid body deformation while non rigid body deformation is your strain or distortion a strain or distortion basically means the change in shape size form or volume so deformation is the transformation from initial to final geometry by means of rigid body translation rigid body rotation strain okay and or volume change so this red portion here is the proper definition of your deformation theek hai to deformation mein you have your rigid body and non rigid body rigid body rotation plus translation non rigid body only distortion or it is called strain okay distortion or strain distortion basically means change in shape size volume okay or the form of the rock all right so i hope it is clear what is deformation so here you can see an example of the deformation here is a example of translation translation so uh, most of you might know what is this what this is this is your normal fault okay fault is basically where the uh, rocks are slipping apart okay from each other so here you can see this block was original originally it was horizontal and the extensional forces act upon it causing this block causing this block to move down and this is a fractured surface okay it is planar in nature so after the uh, force is acting upon it it got deformed into this okay now you know that there is not any change in shape size or form rather this block was translated from this original location to let's say this is the first location and this is the second location okay so this is translation or you could say displacement okay here is an uh, example of uh, real life example or the field example of normal fault then there is rotation okay rotation of the uh, so this is strata you can see is inclined in nature right this is the beds which were original in uh, horizontal okay so they were uh, originally horizontally laid out and uh, due to some tectonic forces they got rotated along an axis this axis they got rotated imagine this is coming out of your screen okay so there was a rotation here so this is a type of deformation also but here you can see clearly see that there was no change in shape form or volume okay only the orientation and then this is your strain okay or uh, or the distortion so originally this uh, bed was horizontal and the compressional forces were acting upon it causing it to fold or the buck or buckle into this structure okay this structure is called fold okay fold so this is pretty obvious okay so these are basically your uh, displacement and particle path okay in rotation you can see this rock was rotated okay so particle path was like this in rotation particle path is like this okay like for example uh, this is a rock and this is a particle here or the grain here whatever the point you are talking about and it was rotated into this location first so how the root or the path was laid out in a circular fashion but the displacement was from this point to this point so displacement is basically a straight line 
particle path is the actual path which the grains of the rock or the point of the rock is going to follow. In translation, the displacement field is also straight and particle path is also straight. So translation is basically the movement in straight line. Okay. And then there can be strain. So strain can be of different types such as simple shear, sub simple shear, pure shear. What is simple? What is sub simple? What is pure? This we are going to talk about in later parts. Only right now you have to remember that a strain is the change in shape size volume. Okay. So there can be three main type of strains, simple, sub simple and pure shear. Only right now this you have to remember. Okay. So translation real life example can be seen uh, in faults or thrust nappies. Okay, these are a type of structures. Uh, thrust is also a type of structure that we are going to discuss. Okay. So translations definition is translation moves every particle in the rock in the same direction and the same distance and its displacement field consists of parallel vectors of equal length. So here you can see <coughs> parallel ve vectors of equal length. Okay, I hope you know what is vector. Okay, so same direction. Let's say that the particle was here and it was moved to 1 dash 1 in the Cartesian plane. Here you can see that let's say this is east and this is west. This side is north. This is south. So particles were moving from west to east. So every particle is moving from west to east in the straight line. So this is your translation. Okay. In rotation, you can see that north, south, uh, west, east. So particle were moved from west direction to north direction. Okay. Okay. So here you can see translation, rotation. Now we talk about strain. So <clears throat> we have talked about translation and rotation, which is basically the rigid body deformation. Okay. And a strain is basically the distortion in non-rigid deformation. Uh, sorry, it is also called non-rigid deformation. Okay, so a point up to the hammer. You have to remember this point. Okay, so any change in shape with or without change in volume is referred to as a strain. Okay, very important definition. Pretty simple, but very important. Okay, as I said, the deformation is the heart of the matter of structural geology. There can be volume change. Okay. Okay, and there can be um, uh, this volume change is also known as dilation. Okay, so this volume change is also known as dilation. It is called a special type of strain, which is known as a volumetric strain. So everything we will talk about in upcoming lecture. So till now you have to only understand the what is a strain. Okay, a strain is a strain is change in shape, size, or the volume of the rock with or without. Then there is a thing called system of reference. System of reference is basically nothing that it is basically the undeformed part of the rock or the undeformed state of the rock. Okay, because if a rock is deformed, like for example, here you can see here you can see if there is a fault, okay, and this rock or this is the hanging wall basically it is called hanging wall and this is called foot wall in fault this is normal fault okay and this is the fault plane okay where uh, along which the rock the second part is sliding okay now if you go to the field and we see this structure here this is the deformed state but how do we know that in original position these rocks were in horizontal fashion? So we need to have a sense of undeformed position of the rock, and that undeformed position is called system of reference. Okay, so a undeformed state ka pata hame hona chahiye, jisse relate karke hum ye pata paaye ki ha. ये जो स्ट्रक्चर है ये डिफॉर्म्ड स्ट्रक्चर है और ओरिजिनल ओरिजिनल पोजीशन में ये हॉरिजॉन्टल रहा होगा ओके सो एनीथिंग थ्रू विच वी कैन यू नो रिलेट टू अनडिफॉर्म पार्ट इज कॉल्ड 
system of preference okay so it is often useful to orient the coordinate system along important geological structures okay to hum coordinate system ka use karte hain uh, to basically uh, uh, you know uh, have a frame of reference for the uh, deformed state okay so this these geological structure could, could be a base of thrust plate boundary or local shear zone where the part is not deformed okay right for example here you can see that uh, the, the the let's say this is the original rock okay and the forces are acting upon it in uh, shear fashion okay what is shear you need not to worry about right now let's say that in the upper part the force is acting upon in this direction and the lower part the force is acting upon in the opposite direction so this will slide and this will get sheared into this position okay and we will use the coordinate system to basically have a system of reference okay so m point uh, originally the point was m then m dash and to n dash okay p to p dash and q to q dash okay then there is a thing called called homogeneous and heterogeneous deformation okay homogeneous and heterogeneous deformation it is basically the deformation so homogeneous deformation is basically the deformation in which the deformation in a rock volume is identical throughout okay that volume remember the volume name is important like for example if there is a rock so homogeneous deformation mein kya hoga each and every part of the rock will experience same constant deformation this is known as homogeneous deformation and if not then it is called heterogeneous deformation okay so rigid rotation translation by definition are homogeneous so obviously rotation and translation me kya ho raha hai puri body move kar rahi hai na reorient ho rahi hai to ek tarike ka kya hai by automatically it is they are homogeneous uh, deformation okay so non rigid body uh, sorry rigid body deformation is a type of homogeneous deformation okay so in homogeneous strain or deformation this uh definition is very important straight lines remain straight parallel lines remain parallel and identically shaped and oriented object will also be identically shaped and oriented after the deformation okay so what is this it basically if you look at this structure okay let's say this is a rock or the shale in this shale you have got dikes or these are the structures okay let's say these are the structures or igneous dikes okay and these are parallel to each other okay some structures like this then there are some fossils of brachiopods okay and these are uh, your uh, ammonites okay and some reduction spots are there reduction spots are basically the microbial uh, chemical activity is causing these spots in the rock okay nonetheless you have to remember that only the structures let you see here are in the rock and the strain is acting upon these rocks and if the homogeneous strain is acting upon these rocks the parallel lines will remain parallel here you can see okay this is the deformed state okay a straight line will remain straight okay and the features or the fossils you see here are uh, if they are in the original shape they will not get distorted rather they will have their original shape intact okay so this is your homogeneous strain okay circle becomes ellipses in three dimension and spheres become ellipsoids in three dimensions this part you have to remember for your homogeneous strain okay this is pretty simple circle jahan pe hoga wo kya ho jayega ellipse ban jayega okay aur kahin pe sphere hoga body ke andar so it will become a ellipsoid okay in three dimension like a rugby rugby ball right so in homogeneous strain the strain and volume area change will be constant throughout the volume of rock okay to so, puri rock ki volume mein agar same deformation lag raha hai aapka so that is your homogeneous strain now heterogeneous strain is what if there is not homogeneous strain then the rock is called heterogeneously strain now one thing you have to remember that homogeneous and heterogeneous strain are basically 
based upon perspective or the size of the scale at which we are looking at rock for example this is the second is homogeneously deformed and this is heterogeneously deformed both are the same structures okay but if we look at micro scale you will see that in micro scale you will see that each part of this ellipsoid or ellipse are basically fractured in this sense right micro scale pe dekhe to ye fractured hai and large scale pe dekhe to ye aisa lagega ki homogeneous hai okay so scale ke hisab se that at what scale we are looking at we can define the same homogeneous uh, strained structure as heterogeneously strained structures okay so this is heterogeneous okay now we will talk about one dimensional strain uh, in one dimensional strain we will talk about elongation stretching quadratic elongation and natural strain so um, let's do one thing let's wrap up this lecture because it has already been half an hour and that is enough okay so we will talk about one dimensional strain in upcoming uh, lectures in the part 2 and we will also talk about more um, aspects of structural geology okay so uh, this is it for the first lecture i hope it is clear what is structural geology and what is deformation okay and in upcoming lectures we will talk about more part of the strain okay so till then stay safe and if you like this lecture don't forget to subscribe and comment down below thank you